So pretty much everyone knows about game feel and how important it is, if, if not there's plenty of videos out there about it, and most of the time when we talk about adding polish to a game, game feel is what we're referring to. So I thought I would point out a few non-game feel related things that you can polish in your game to make your game feel professional and, you know, quality. Let's go! Have controls for your game accessible in-game. Add keybinding if possible, but at least have a place where the player can see the basic controls of the game without having to leave the game. So many times, especially on itch.io, the controls can only be found on the game's webpage. And you might say, well, just scroll down a bit more. No, this is stupid. Everything a player needs to play a game should be in the game. And adding a simple screen or even just some images to your main menu or pause menu isn't that hard. I mean, you don't have to add this and that's why it's polished. If you want to elevate your game to the next level, make controls accessible in game. If you don't add key bindings to your game, add multiple controls so that the player can play comfortably. For example, if you're making a 2D side scroller and you have WASD as movement controls and W makes you jump, if the spacebar isn't being used, then just add it as another way to jump. In my game, I had tab be the way to open the crafting menu, but after letting a few people play test, I noticed some of them wanted to press Q, E, or even shift. And because these keys weren't really being used for much else, I just added them as an option to open the same menu. It's little things like this that can go a long way. Speaking of controls, be sure to add audio controls. Once you've done it a few times, it really isn't that difficult, as most game engines will do the heavy lifting here. You just need to add the options in the main menu or pause menu and give the player the ability to adjust the volume in game, or even turn it off altogether. Ideally, try to set a nice volume as default and have that be in the center. That way, the player can turn it up or down as they see fit. If you have several people helping make the game or even a list of playtesters, whatever the case is, if you have enough names besides your own that you need to add to credits, don't just have it at the end of the game. Include a credits button in the main menu where contributors can be seen without even having to play the game. It's a little thing, but it's an important one. For larger games, watching things pop onto the screen as everything loads looks terrible. So add a loading screen to hide this, obviously. And try and tie the progress of the loading screen animation to the actual loading progress. That way, for slower computers, the loading animation doesn't finish before the loading is complete. However, I've seen some people add loading screens when they didn't need them, giving the reasoning that it makes the game feel more substantial than it is, as well as pads the runtime. Don't do this. Focus more on making a good game instead of just a long game. So when a scene doesn't require a loading screen, add some nice animations and transitions. This will make your game feel complete, even if it's just to fade to black, and not be an unnecessary load screen. This applies to many things the player can interact with as well. Just try and keep the length of the animation correspond with how often they will be triggered. For example, opening and closing animations for menus should be very quick, because the player is going to be using them often. But an animation revealing a boss fight can be extended quite a bit for dramatic effect, due to the boss fights happening much less frequently. Depending on your game, there will be little things that just need to be added. A lot of these things can be noticed when you play a game without them and with them. For example, in Minecraft, you can automatically select the blocks in your inventory by looking at the same block in world and middle clicking. Essentially, an eyedropper tool. And I've played other building games that don't have this, and the inconvenience of not having it makes it somewhat annoying to build. For example, in 7 Days to Die, it was just not a feature for the longest time. They did finally add it, but it just took them quite a while. And at the same time, there are games with inventories that have a sort button, such as 7 Days to Die, but Minecraft does not have this, unless you get the right mod. So consider the type of game you are making and play similar games. Look at the little things that make the game easier to play and try to include some of them in your game. It will go a long way in keeping the player only frustrated at the difficulty of your game and not the difficulty of playing your game. Now I'm sure there are more little things like this that could be polished, but that's all I could think of at the moment. So if you know of any more, be sure to put them in the comments below just in case someone else could benefit from hearing about it. Otherwise, thanks for watching and have a beautiful day.